channel. Today I thought I'd take you thrifting with me. A lot of you have been asking over on my Instagram how I make those pottery barn inspired lamps for under $25. Well, today I just wanted to show you how I did that really quick. So I went to my local thrift store just to walk around to see if I found anything. Hi, baby Z. And I came across this beauty. Okay, you guys, look at the shape of this lamp. Everything except for the bottom, which I'm hoping that I can take off, is perfection. Honestly, the lamp itself isn't really that bad. Totally reminds me of the one on the McGee & Co. website. So let's see if we can try to recreate it all for $20. Now it's time to clean. So I always go in with Clorox wipes. I wipe it down a couple times just because who knows where it has been. And I'm such a clean freak and OCD. So it gets a good wash down. And then I decided to get rid of this bottom part. This is the part that I felt like was such an eyesore on the lamp. And it was actually pretty easy to take apart. As you can see, I'm just unscrewing the couple of the holes and then it pretty much just slides off actually easier than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't even need my husband to help me with this part. As you can see, it just slides completely off. And now the fun part. So I was so nervous, I thought I was gonna break the lamp and it literally just popped off. And this is exactly what I was picturing when I saw this lamp in the thrift store. The shape of this lamp is just perfection. Because the lamp no longer had a base, we went to the local Home Depot to pick up a new light fixture for the light. We picked this one up and decided to just go home and spray it all black. I love using Rust-Oleum in flat or matte. Gave it a couple coats and it was time to go back inside to get started on the lamp. Now this right here, baking soda, is my favorite, favorite secret ingredient. This I just used what we had at home. It's just alabaster um, and I just mixed it in a bowl. And there's no measurements, no anything. I just kind of eyeball it and kind of feel how I like the texture. I like it to be a little bit thick because the thicker it is, the more texture and the more matte I notice that the paint is. Also, the paint that I always use is flat. I don't ever get anything with a shine or satin or anything like that. Just always use matte. And then here I'm just going all the way around the lamp in the same direction. I just layer it and layer it and layer it until I get a pretty good coat. I will go over the lamp four to five times before I officially let it sit to dry. As you can see, all the texture that's starting to form and that is purely just from the baking soda, which is why I love using it. It's such an easy process, but the end result is so beautiful. While the first coat was drying, I decided I was gonna try to save this lampshade. Normally I buy my lampshades brand new and toss the old ones, but there was something about this one that I just loved. I just took regular soap and a white washcloth and just cleaned it and put it outside to dry. Now this is where the magic and the texture and the beautiful and gorgeous and just amazing part of the lamp starts to happen. So the lamp itself needs to be pretty much tacky and then you just go in and you just start dabbing and playing around with it. So you'll dab and dab and dab, and then you'll wipe it so that it's not so rough on the edges so that you still want it smooth, but you still want that gorgeous texture because that gorgeous texture is what's gonna show through on the next step of this lamp. Once the paint starts to dry and get thicker, it actually gets easier to use. So I just go in random spots all over the lamp and just start adding stuff. It's just really personal preference and whatever you like. I just personally like a lot of texture because when we start adding in the browns and the grays and the more natural elements, you can start to see them more because they'll be able to hide in the crevices that you're making as far as the texture. So I just really, keep doing this sometimes a couple hours throughout the whole day. This lamp will sit on my counter and I will just come and play with it just randomly throughout the day until I'm pretty much out of paint. That's when I know that I'm done. At the end, I always love it. So I just dab, dab, dab. And as the paint starts to get tackier and tackier, it just gets easier and easier. And as you can see, this was the final result. And we're just gonna let it dry overnight. And then in the morning, we'll come back and start adding in all those other fun elements like dirt, 
cinnamon, antique glaze. I mean, I do it all. I told you, I can't stop, but <laughs> wait until you see how it turns out. And see all that beautiful texture? Oh my gosh, I am just so obsessed. Now that the lamp is dried overnight, I'm just going in with Valspar Antique Glaze. And with a glove, I'm just taking the product and I'm just wiping it in random spots all over the lamp. You're gonna wanna build this product. So this is something that you're gonna do over and over and over again. I'm then just gonna take a wet paper towel, wipe it off, dab it to where almost nothing is there. Just like when we were painting, everything is just gonna be buildable. So you're gonna think that nothing is happening or it's not looking good, but trust me, when you see the finished result, you're gonna be so glad. So again, like I said, you're just building and wiping, building and wiping. Sometimes I completely wipe the product off if I didn't like a certain thing that I did, or if I felt like I needed more, I just add more. So there really isn't any right or wrong, it's just really whatever is personal preference to you. As you can see up close, this really is such an easy process. Now you're gonna do the same thing that you did on the top all over the body of the lamp. What I personally do is I concentrate a lot on the top and the bottom because I feel like for an aged lamp or an aged vessel, that's where you're gonna see most of the like wear on the top and the bottom. So I always like to do those two really heavy and then maybe a little bit less heavy in the middle. This is after the first coat of the antique glaze. You can really tell how the antique glaze sits in the crevices of the texture that we made. So now again, I go through and I do a second coat. I do the same exact thing as the first coat, but what I do a little bit more on this one is I keep a wet paper towel really close at hand because I will sometimes just dab the wet paper towel in just so that I can wipe most of it off. And here is the final result of the antique glaze. The next two steps are my most favorite because this is when you truly see the lamp come to life. I go in with dirt, just regular old dirt that I get from my backyard and I turn it into mud. I then grab that wet paper towel and I do the same thing over and over again. I'm telling you, anybody can make this distressed lamp. It is the easiest process. So you just go over and over again, all over the lamp. I normally do the dirt probably once, maybe twice, because the next step is the one that really, really makes the biggest difference in this lamp. And now it's time for the final step, and that is cinnamon. Yes, just store-bought cinnamon. I get a big old thing from Costco because I use it almost on all my projects. Cinnamon is great because the color is just gorgeous and it's so fine, it lives in the texture you've created. So if you're gonna do this lamp, do not skip out on the cinnamon. If you want, you can take a clear matte spray paint just so that you seal everything together. I personally don't because with a lamp, I'm not really playing with it that much and I notice that everything still stays exactly where I put it even years later. So it's totally up to you. Let's go see the finished product. 